This is a really important moment for the RAF. You have a, a new man in charge, uh, Air Chief Marshal Sir Richard Knighton, and he clearly wants to grip an issue that has been um, incredibly demoralising for a lot of people in the Air Force and, and also for those who are looking to apply to join the Air Force, concerns about uh, whether or not white men um, are being discriminated against. Um, we reported last year that the then head of recruitment, a woman called Group Captain Lizzie Nicholl, had resigned in protest at what she deemed to be an illegal order to prioritise women and ethnic minority recruits onto training courses at the expense of white men. She said that she had, she had received legal advice advising her that this order that she was receiving from her bosses was illegal. And despite that, her chain of command, the more senior people right at the top of the RAF, all the way up to then Chief Air Chief Marshal Sir Mike Wigston, insist, kept on insisting that she implement this order. She refused and resigned her post. That is what we revealed last year. In the wake of those revelations, much more developed. There were allegations that under a previous head of recruitment of the RAF, these same kind of practices had actually taken place. An inquiry was launched by Air Chief Marshal Wigston to look into all that. It's culminated in this 72-page report that is being published right now by the RAF. I have to admit they are being very open about this now. The new head of the Air Force has apologised unreservedly to all those impacted. He said that he's also apologised personally to Group Captain Nicholl, um, who has lost her career over this debacle. Ben Wallace, the Defence Secretary, was asked about this um, in the last hour or so, and, and this is what he said, but important to note, he was speaking before the report was actually published. Wow, the whole thing has been, I think, uh, a significant error and indeed a, a cause for regret of the RAF. Uh, they didn't lower the standard, they discriminated against those people that were applying who were above the standard. So our military output wasn't put at risk, however the treatment of the people applying was, what it was, you know, was wrong, unsatisfactory uh, and uh, you know, I also think that the treatment of the officer who raised concerns uh, and her very genuine uh, worry is being ignored was something that is, needs to be looked at considerably about why uh, she was ignored, why indeed she was put under that pressure. And I don't want to see anyone put under pressure to do something like what we've seen in the RAF. It's complicated what happened. The key issue where this illegal discrimination took place was in 2020 and 2021, when 161 ethnic minority and female recruits were pushed onto training courses, accelerated onto these training courses, at a time when recruitment officers had different legal advice that led them to believe that this action was positive action, which is a legal way to try to improve diversity. No one's disputing that that goal is a really important one for the RAF. The problem was, though, that at the time, people in the recruitment team were raising concerns about the legality of what they were being asked to do. Uh, the report talks about how whether or not they were actually listened to um, or their concerns heeded. And then when Group Captain Nicholl took over uh, in 2021, she saw all these practices that had been taking place. She, you know, According to this, this report, she then went on to challenge her chain of command when she was asked to implement similar orders in 2022. Now, that, that that order was never actually implemented itself, and but only because she resigned. And we even had uh, Air Chief Marshal Wigston, when he appeared before MPs last September, still insisting that there was no illegal action taking place. I absolutely uh, recognise the, you know, the, the, you know, the reputational harm that was done. 
But as, as I've said, there was you know, some of what you said in your opening remarks implied that there were different standards applied, that there was active discrimination against uh, you know, uh, you know, people who, you know, uh, uh, white men. Um, but that was that was that was not the case. And yet now we hear that it really was the case. It was the case during that period in 2020 and 2021. It wasn't the case in 2022 under Group Captain Nicol, but that's only because she refused the order. This is what the chair of the Defence Select Committee, who was quizzing Air Chief Marshal Wigston last September, this is what he had to say when we caught up with him just now. I suspect that there will be a huge appetite to call in uh, Sir Mike Wigston, uh, uh, even though he's retired, to answer and question him on the results of this report and what he said to us when he tried to gloss over the seriousness of what was happening when he last attended back in February of this year. It's an uncomfortable moment for the RAF. The new leadership is clearly taking it seriously and wants to draw a line under it. He said that the RAF will be taking on and has already implemented uh, a number of the 12 recommendations for improvements that have been made in the report. However, he did say that nobody is being held, nobody is being blamed, no individual is being sanctioned. And I think that is going going to sit quite uncomfortably with all those who have been impacted, because what it means, in effect, is that the one person who stood up and called out what she believed correctly to be illegal action in terms of discriminating against white men had to sacrifice her career, while those above her, all the way up to the top with Air Chief Marshal Wigston, uh, are not being um, sanctioned in any way. The head of the RAF now says this is because it really was down to um, a, a legal advice that was incorrect at the time it was given and that everybody at the time was acting in what they believed to be a legal way. Nobody was, was trying to act unlawfully. Um, that advice just changed and that's why the circumstances have changed. I'm not sure that's going to sit with everybody, especially one final thing, because the Armed Forces Minister said to me last year that should any illegal or wrongful activity be found to have taken place, then those responsible would be held to account.